to Rose Hip Needle Podcast, episode 32. My name is Hannah and I am recording this podcast from Northern Tasmania, Australia. I am a Swedish um, mum of two little girls who um, now live in Australia and I have done so for the past 10 years and a bit. <laughs> I have a six-year-old, or soon six-year-old, and a two-year-old and um, I am... Um, try to fill as, mo as much of my days with craft as I possibly can, which you might um, be able to imagine uh, is sometimes hard with two little children and working and um, looking after the house. Um, so in this podcast I talk about what I have been doing, uh, what I have been knitting um, and other crafting things, sewing, uh, hand dyeing and um, other fun things. Uh, you can find me as Rose Hip Chick on Ravelry and on Instagram and I really like when you come and um, follow me and friend me and that way I'll be able to do the same with you and I can see what you're working on and what you uh, fill your days with and uh, I can find out who are actually watching. Um, we have a group for the podcast, a group on Ravelry, and you can find that by searching for Rose Hip Needs Podcast. And at the moment, we have a um, mini cow going on in the group, and um, that's a knit along or craft along um, where you use a mini or some scraps or just a tiny amount of. Um, any type of yarn in a project or a part of a project and uh, just post your finished objects in the FO thread and um, you enter to um, possibly win the giveaway which is a let's see if you sit behind me which is this little little bag with some of my hand dyed minis in the group at the moment, there's also a, um, a one year anniversary thread um, for a giveaway. Um, and both of these threads will close end of March and it's today the 28th of March, so there's not many days left. But for the anniversary, one year anniversary thread, I'll just ask you to tell me uh, what you normally do when you're watching the podcast and when you started watching. So go and join the group and have a look at those threads. So I'd like to say, say thank you to all of you for watching, new and returning. Thank you for subscribing and uh, being in contact with me in any way you have. And um, thank you to those of you that took the opportunity to use the coupon code for my Etsy shop, Rosehip Island. Um, I gave you that coupon code in the last episode and it will last until end of March. So again, not many days left but I will put the coupon code in here again um, if you have the chance to use it or feel free to just go and have a look in the shop. I've put a, a few new things in there in the last um, couple of days. So the coupon code is one to number one year pod, Y-E-A-R-P-O-D, and I'll, I'll put it on the screen somewhere. So if you can, um, go and have a look. And um, I think that's all for Welcome, introduction, and thank you. So today I'd like to share with you some of the knitting I've been working on. I have finished something, I have continued working on something, and I have started a couple of things. And um, I have done some dyeing, quite a bit of dyeing for the shop, but I, I did a little bit of experimenting with a few different things, and I'd like to show you those things, just how things can turn out quite differently, which is small differences in the process and then I have been doing sewing as you can see back here I have quite a few new project bags that I have up in the Etsy shop and um, but I made a bag for myself as well so I might show you that towards the end and I think that's it so I'm really excited and I'd like to show you my knitting Um, so 
So the thing that I finished were my mittens for the New Hampshire Knits Mitten Knit Along. And here they are. And if you follow me on Instagram, you will have seen these and the process of them going from being a work in progress to blocking to being a finished, a finished object. So these are the Stranded Snowman Mittens by Kathleen Turner and they are a free pattern and you can find it on Ravelry and we'll take you to a blog. Um, these are meant to be a child size. I think I made the size five to seven years old, but I used a sport weight yarn, a five ply. And the one that I used was Peyton's Bluebell five ply. And uh, so they turned out a little bit bigger and I blocked them and stretched them quite a bit. So before, before blocking them, they were not large enough for me and way too big for my daughter, who's six almost. Uh, but after blocking, the, the hand of the meat actually fits me quite well. You can see I did a little embroidery on there. Snowman. I only did embroidery on the top of the mitten. And but now with the thumb, the thumb is not quite long enough for my my hand, my thumb. So I would need this to go all the way down there, but now it's sort of sitting halfway up my thumb. The start of it. So what I'll do is that I'll take this back, rip it back, and just make a longer thumb and um, then they'll actually be wearable for me. But I'm really happy with them. I used um, knit blocker combs. I'll, I'll insert a picture if I remember. And I really like them. It was so easy to block them and, and get them nice and even and, and flat. So I posted them in the finished objects for the New Hampshire knit mitten along. Uh, so that was fun because I feel like I haven't really entered anything in a knit along for a long time. So that was that's great. And I, I honestly don't think that I would have finished them this quickly as I did if I had not been part of that knit along. There were so many um, great mittens that people were working on and I really um, want to make more stranded colour work and more mittens. Unfortunately, our... Um, climate here and our winters are just not really cold enough for mittens. Mornings and evenings can be really really cold but often the day warms up quite quickly and wearing mittens is just it's just too much really. Um, but I do have a few pairs and they can always uh, come in handy if it's a really cold day. So you might get <laughs> uh, two three days um, in the winter when when you can use them at least that's how i feel i'm sure that people that have a um different lifestyle or they go um hiking and things more than i do they might have a different feeling about this they might use really warm and um nice um mittens more than i do so that's them and I'm really happy with them. And then I have been working on the cowl that I also have shown you a few times. And this is the bag from Ganache and I keep mentioning this and I actually just realized that she has an Etsy shop um, with some great looking bags in it. So I'll link to her Etsy shop. Um, she had some um, great bags when I had a look and really um, good prices. So this is my cowl. You can see I have, I have worked quite a bit on it. Um, you meant to do, according to pattern, seven repeats here. And I am doing my fifth repeat at the moment. What I am using is Atelier yarn in the Pinnacle um, color, Pinnacle base, which is 100% Superwash Merino. A single ply fingering weight and this is the gray sky one-of-a-kind colorway 
and I love this. I love um, the grey colourway. I like really like the the single merino ply, and I really enjoy the pattern. I think once it's off the needles and it's blocked, it will um, show off much better because this um, section here with the la uh, cable and lace is actually sort of turning a bit and um, it is looking a bit funny when it's still on the needles. But I'm really enjoying that and I have I did four repeats using the chart, that was fine, and now I'm doing a repeat using the written instructions and that's working really well too. I think I actually only have one round left on the fifth repeat, so that's going great. Okay, so they are the things that you have seen before. And then I am, um, right after finishing the mittens, I just wanted to cast on all the things. So I started with casting on a pair of socks. And I have them in my chasing acorn bag, another one of my favorites. And um, I showed you this yarn not long ago. This is hand dyed sock yarn that Erin of the Holland Handmade podcast dyed for me. Or she dyed it and she gave it to me in a swap. This beautiful tonal blue, very happy blue, I'd say, sky blue. And I cast on a pair of socks that I have been wanting to make for a long time. And they are the simple Skype socks. And this is a sock pattern, I think from men's size, that's using a sport weight. But I'm using a fingering weight and just using the amount of stitches that I normally use for myself. And I am working them two at a time, magic loop on some higher highs using my little stitch marker from Sandra Craftfulness Podcast and um, have only done the cup so far but I'm really liking this colour blue and I think they will they look just really happy and nice and uh, they'll be my take along knitting. I might swap them over to the nine inch circular needles I'm not sure it depends on the actual patterning of the sock um, which I don't think is very complicated um, but yes I'll work on those as my take along project so that's the one thing I started the other one is one that I talked to you you about um, last time and that's the Moonraker shawl by Melanie Berg so I started this I have it in my bag from Sandra again of Craft Wellness Podcast and I have shown you before the different um, yarn that I wanted to use for it and I have not got very far this is what I have. I've only done the first row of daisy stitches in the contrast colour. But I'm really liking it. I'm using my Chiagos for the first time. I've, I have my nine inch circulars are Chiagos, but these are the ones that I bought recently with the, I think, 80 centimeter cable. It's a 3.5 millimeter needle. And the main colour I'm using is this Day of Baby Ool colour 4845. And I've started with my first contrast colour, which will actually be like the second half of the shawl, and that's in my flock and needle. Mm, I should have. Should have the label in here. Yes, the flock and needle, blushing hearts, which is a merino cashmere nylon fingering weight. 
and I think they're going really well together. So yes, I've done my, I only used the first two colours and only one row of the daisy chain stitch. Um, but I'm really enjoying it. I must say when I started making it, and the first row, when I started the daisy chain stitch, I didn't even know it was daisy, stay, daisy chain stitch. Is that really what they're called? I think that's what they're called. Um, so I was only following the pattern description and I had no idea what they wanted me to do. I was just trying to follow the instructions and um, it didn't seem right. So then I had a look at other projects on Ravelry, which of course is the best thing to do and it's, you always find valuable information that way. And someone had um, talked about a YouTube video that they had used for the Daisy's chain stitch. And I looked that up and um, yes, that just immediately, it was just very clear what I was meant to be doing. So I did that and it was fine and it was really easy. So I linked to that in my project notes on Ravelry. So, so yes, they are the things I have been working on. I have not again touched my praline cardigan. And uh, what I want to cast on next, I think I'll continue casting things on without finishing anything, is a um, softie for the Legacy Knits um, softie mm -hmm. along. That starts 1st of April, so I'm going to plan for something to cast on for that. Um, and by the way, if you haven't watched Legacy Knits, that's just a great podcast, so you should go <laughs> and check it out. Which reminds me, what I'm wearing today is a shawl uh, uh, that was designed by another podcaster, uh, Caroline, and uh, of Sasu Podcast. And Sasu Yarns, wool box. Anyway, I'll, I'll link to the information here, Caroline. And uh, yes, she designed this shawl and I tested it for her. It's the Tulip Feel shawl. And as you can see, I ran out of my colour that I was going to use. It's only meant to have a one contrasting colour on the border, I think. I ran out, so <laughs> I, had, I went through another two different colours, this one. But I, I really like this. So that's what I'm wearing and I'll link to the details in my show notes. The show notes you can find on the blog, which is uh, rosehipknitspodcast.blogspot.com. Okay, that's knitting. I'm sorry if I seem rushed. I've just had children um, needing me a couple of times. So I've been rushing around a bit. That's fine. <laughs> I'll calm down. Okay, that's the knitting. And... Um, then of course I have been doing some dyeing. I've had a pretty, a pretty crazy work week. Every week now seems like a, a crazy work week. I basically have three days a week when I have children in care and school, both of them, and I can work from out of the house and I've been working in a lab um, in the last few months. And uh, I didn't think it would be three days a week, but it has been. Um, so then I all the other things I have to do, I have to do with my little two-year-old around, which is not always easy. And um, my dyeing and sewing has been happening at night. And just like an hour a night or something, not very much. Anyway, um, I wanted to try a few different things when I was dyeing. So I, um, you might remember if you have watched before that I had dyed some skeins of my sock yarn in a grey, tonal grey, and then used that as the base when I did self-striping, just to see um, how that layering effect would um, come out. So I had one of those skeins that was grey left, and I thought I'll, I'll use that and dyed together with um, the same base, but undyed skein two of them in the same pot and apply the same uh, dye on them. So I did that and I wanted to do a flamingo <laughs> colorway because I've been making all the flamingo bags. So I, um, I did that and I dyed one on the grey yarn and one on the undyed yarn and they were in the same pot and I think I might have a photo I can insert somewhere and this was the result. 
So this is the one, of course, that was grey before I applied colour and this was undyed. So I just um, thought it was interesting to see how that little bit of, well, I guess it was quite a big difference, but still one was grey and one was um, just white. And um, I did exactly the same thing. They were in the same pot when I dyed them. And this is how they came out. Another little experiment that I did was with using different bases. I have been talking about how I dyed the white gum wool and it takes the dye completely different, differently. It's a white gum wool is a non superwash, 100% merino. And um, it's been not hard, maybe a bit challenging or just different to how my previous experiences with dyeing, how how to get the dice take the way I want. Anyway, I prepared a skein of the fingering white gum wool and I prepared a skein of my Osok, which is a superwash merino and nylon blend. And I prepared them both, I treated them exactly the same, put them in the same dye bath, or in the same pot, in the same dye bath, and did exactly the same thing to them. And <laughs> This was the result. So this is the white gum wool, which is a non-superwash. This is a superwash. So you can see how differently it comes out. The Osok is just so bright and colourful and saturated and beautiful. And you can probably not see it um, just as well as it, like how bright it actually is. And the white gum wool just has again that very soft sort of tonal variegated um, look to it. So that was very interesting uh, to me to see that and get that sort of confirmed that that is how big the difference is because I have been dyeing things and expecting a totally different outcome and um, I don't know should I apply more dye or um, should I use more citric acid do I need to heat it for longer? I'm not sure. So I just wanted to do exactly the same thing with the base that I have dyed before and the white gum wool and just see what the difference was. And this just tells me a lot about what's going on. But isn't that interesting, like the superwash, how that treatment just makes it take the dye so much better or so much more? And that, of course, is fun. It just speaks to you straight away and it gets people's attention. And I can, you know, this one has sold. When I put them on Etsy, this one hasn't. So <laughs> it tells you something. It just grabs people's attention. It's just beautiful. But this one is just beautiful in its own way, I think. And it's just... I think, honestly, that this one... It's harder to knit up into something that's um, not crazy. Whereas this one is more tonal and I think it will easier to knit up to something that looks not nice. This will of course also look nice knitted up. But this might be something that's uh, and it's into something that's an item that's easier to, <laughs> to match with things and easier to wear. Yes, yeah, so that was just another interesting thing that I wanted to share with you. And then the last sort of differences that I have done with the dyeing, I did some more dyeing of white gum wool and I have, I did two of each and I have one reskained and one not reskained. So I just wanted to show you that as well. That's another example of how different things can look and yes, and how important presentation of things are, I guess and how small things can make a huge difference when you when you see things. So this is a reskained of course and a not reskained. And I've called these peach hearts, I think that's a little sweet. I know we have them in Sweden, I don't know. I googled them and it came up so I think maybe there's something you can find maybe in Australia or the US too. But they're little hearts. I think they're peach flavour. And they're sort of a peachy colour and a pink red colour. And it just reminded me of them. 
but isn't like that's yes again just rescaling it and I'm sure that some people would be very attracted to this and think that that looks nice and they would not like this one and vice versa and that just, it makes it so hard to present your things when you're selling things online it's really hard to know um, yes and it's really hard I guess for for people looking online to buy things also to or it catches your attention might attention might not be what you actually um, prefer knitted up but of course you gravitate to nice colors and bright colors and maybe things that are fun and blotchy and not evenly spread in a skein and of course you want to go with what catches your attention that's what you want to buy but if you think again maybe that's not really what you find most useful um, knitting with or the what will come out the way you want when you knit it up. I have one more uh, reskein. This is one that I call violets. So reskeined and not reskeined. So yes, and me personally, I see a lot of skeins like this at the moment um, on Instagram and everywhere. Just skeins not reskeined that have splotches of colour and I just love them I think they look so fun and um, this does not really honestly appeal to me as much um, but I love reskeining things now because you then you can really tell what they will look like or more likely look like when you need them up so yes I just wanted to share that with you um, so that's some of the dyeing that I have been doing and as I said I have been doing some sewing, some project bags, put a few up, sold a few already so that's nice and I made one for me because originally I purchased this fabric um, to make a project bag for me and it was a not well not it was not an inexpensive fabric it was one of the most expensive one I bought for a project bag so I was only going to make it for me and uh, so I could justify buying it because I was uh, making myself a nice project bag but then when I, I looked at it and I was going to make myself a project bag I figured that I could get more than one out from the piece of fabric that I had and I thought oh well I'll make one to sell and one for myself I made them and decided to sell both of them because I thought I'll, I'll go and get some more fabric. So I never made myself one in the first um, lot that I did. So I went back and purchased some more fabric and um, made myself one and some for the shop. So that's it and this is not 100% um, to my standard so that's why I kept it for myself. I just thought whichever one, or if one of them does not come out um, quality that I'm willing to sell, that will be for me. So it happened to be this one. Uh, as you can see, my little triangles here are not evenly um, spread out. So, and oh. My seams were a bit wonky. Anyway, I don't have to point out all the things that I that uh, I'm not happy with this bag because I'm still very very happy with it. I don't need all the perfect details for my bag. I have this lining, uh, and also with this one, I tried out a, a label. It's a little label that says Rosehip Island, and um, I just got these online, and yes, they're not what I expected them to be so I'm not going to use these for my bags if any of you know of a good place to buy labels good quality nice looking labels online please let me know because I am sort of interested well I'm interested in buying labels for my bags if they are the right label if they're not I prefer not to have the labels on there so yes I made this bag for me so now I have to Put something in there. Maybe the softy I'm going to make. So that's that one. Um, I think that will have to be it for this time. Um, 
I have a few parcels to pack up today to send out tomorrow. The post office opens again after having, um, I think they've been closed for four days. So I have a few things to post tomorrow. And um, softies to plan, <laughs> knitting to do, and children to look after. And uh, yes, I'm back to work tomorrow. So yes, I'm happy that I got this chance to talk to you all and I'm happy that I got to show some of the hand dyeing that I have been doing because I, I really did those sort of experiments to be able to share them with you and then I didn't expect them to sell as fast as they did so I needed to show them before I post them tomorrow. Anyway, looking here reminds me I have this um, hand spun out that I... I have it out because I want to um, make something out of hand spun soon and also I like to use my spinning wheel soon so yes hopefully I can talk about spinning soon okay I'm going to finish my tea maybe go microwave it first and go and do some gardening with my husband and my girls or try to it's not very easy with the two-year-old she has other ideas of what to do and uh, yes I hope you're all well and thank you so much for watching and joining me and um, talking to me online. Go and check out the Etsy shop if you have time and you feel like doing so. It might be that the coupon code is still uh, valid when you watch this, so go and have a look. I keep adding things all the time and uh, yes, I often, well most of the times, I'll let you know on Instagram. So. Thank you everyone, thank you for the support and I'll see you next time. Take care, bye.